My dear compatriots, we have arrived at one of the greatest moments of the history of our nation, a great moment of victory for national unity and reconciliation. We have arrived at the end of a tragic and painful conflict. 30 months ago, we were obliged to take up arms against our brothers who were deceived and misled into armed rebellion against their fatherland by the former Lieutenant Colonel Ojuku. Our objectives was to crush the rebellion, to maintain the territorial integrity of our nation, to assert the ability of the black man to build a progressive and prosperous modern state and to ensure respect, dignity, and equality in the Committee of Nations for our posterity. In a conflict of this nature, where Lagos certainly has the superiority of arms, which is having armor, having artillery, one would expect the Lagos troops to break through and then get pushed back depending on the strength of the resistance. And this is really what we've been doing, particularly on the Nsoka sector. Today, they push forward, tomorrow we push them back. And today they push forward, tomorrow we cut through the line of communication, they have to rush back. And this is what has been happening.
We've just come through a fairly terrifying night. We set off from the bridge with the three battalions. and We were in the rear with the 12th battalion. We were ambushed at about four o'clock, a heavy machine gun ambush. For a while, it seemed that the three battalions spread out along this jungle road here were pinning the machine guns down. And then at about six o'clock, the 12th battalion panicked. Most of them are recruits that have come in on a crash training program. We dived into the ditch not knowing what was going on. Fire was coming from every direction. The, the noise, well, it was such a noise, I've never heard the sound of gunfire like it before. And there were officers running up and down the trenches shouting, the next one who panics will get shot. And they were screaming to their soldiers to stop. Well, eventually they did stop. But the colonel who's leading the three battalions along this axis was very, very cross and very angry with a lot of his own men this morning. Yes, I was with you, I was with you there, over, sir, over there, sir. Well, he was probably shot by one of our chaps, too. Stupid <laughs> attack. Colonel Ali, you clearly have problems with some of your men who've not had very long in training. Some of them did rather panic just now. How much of a problem is this for you? It is a problem initially, but all that it requires is for them to get used to the battle uh, fright. Uh, this is their first time in action, and normally you get a bit of battle fright until you master this, and it doesn't bother you anymore. What sort of percentage of your force com is, consists of seasoned soldiers? On this front, uh, I would say 50-50. People, observers who try to be objective about this war, none of us know very much about it, uh, say that the great problem of the Nigerian army is that it's one of the world's best internal police forces, but that it's not yet an offensive army. Is, the, is this a fair assessment? I would say this is a very fair assessment, uh, because the uh, Nigerian army and the country as a whole never thought of being faced with, with this sort of problem, ever. So we geared our army towards internal security duties. But now we hope we will have lived up to the other side of it too. So you, you are making the transformation in this war from a police force to an army? Exactly. How longer would you assess that it's going to take federal forces to complete the defeat? Oh, another month or so, as I reckon. Particularly as uh, we are very fast in the Midwest. If we get all the troops in the Midwest onto this sector, and uh, the pressure from ECOM sector 
I reckon another month, maybe even shorter. Since I've been with you in these past few hours, I've heard you say several times, Colonel, that we're all Nigerians fighting this war. Does it hurt you particularly to have to shoot dead fellow Nigerians, Igbos? Well, I must admit, uh, it's not funny. This war is, is not... We had a similar operation in the Congo, and um, I must, it, this is different. Um, it hurts, but um, it's a duty that uh, everybody must do, and we are doing it, I, I reckon, very well. Most of the officers uh, in the army, except the newer ones, Ojuku recruited, are very well known to us. And of course, uh, the, the so goes to, uh, to the other ranks. And uh, it's not funny when you have to kill someone you know very, very well for a very long time. Would you say that the chances for Nigeria staying as one united country will be better or worse after this war? This will depend on the attitude of the civilian population and, of course, the soldiers themselves. Um, but I think we, 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 we stand a good chance of surviving uh, much better. At least we shall respect each other's views uh, much more after the war than we have hitherto done. What do you think of Ajuku now? Do you think he's led you Igbo people into great trouble? Well, of course. I think so. What do you think he should do now? Well, with, uh, uh, so, uh, with the many people here, our opinion is that he, as the federal troop has cut into Enugu, that the next thing is to surrender, to save more life and property and hardship to people. Um, in the long term, we have achieved quite a lot, um, no matter what one says. Indeed, if the 14 million people Biafrans are killed, the notion of Biafra will persist till the end of time. That is an achievement. And I think, too, in the negative side, I think Africa already is a better continent as a result of the experience and the fact of Biafra that we have contributed. There are umpteen number of things one could mention. The fact is that the mere existence of Biafra is an achievement. But if the tide of the war turns sharply against you, how far are you prepared to go before you surrender? I don't think anybody in Biafra contemplates anything like um, surrender, no. Uh, it would not be that. I think probably it would be a question of, right, this is the end. How do we do it in the best way? But you are nevertheless saying, are you not, that if your people said to you, Commander-in-Chief, we want to throw in the sponge, we want to surrender. I have no alternative. Once they say that, I have no alternative. If Biafra is eventually defeated, and defeated while you haven't been recognized, is there not a chance that history will look back upon you and say you've been an irresponsible leader, you've led people to the slaughterhouse and really didn't gain anything out of it? 
It is possible there are so many ignorant commentary being pushed out and, uh, under the cloak of intellectualism, but I know my duty to my people. I feel this intensely. I am absolutely certain of one thing, and that is that when all this is considered at any time, at any stage in the conflict, or when the whole struggle is being considered, the only right judgment would be a man doing his duty to his people. If that is all that is said, I am completely satisfied. That is all really I want. It's not an allegation, it's an accusation direct the British government knows and it, that it is giving massive aid to Nigeria to fight against us. And uh, it is not a question, it's, it's, not, it's all open and they don't deny they are doing it. And they say that they are the traditional suppliers of arms to Nigeria and they will continue to do so and are doing so. We think it's deplorable that a great country, a great government like it, should take sides in an African internal feud. I haven't any home. The clothing I have is just what I what I am putting on now. No food, no money, no nothing at all. Okay. The blockade is not lifted and supplies aren't brought in by the shiploads, which is what you need. What is the future for the people in the refugee camps and those wandering around in the bush? Well, they will die. And so too will the, those in the villages who are not getting enough to eat. And these Hundreds and thousands are going to die. <laughs>
As far as masturbation or the effects of masturbation uh, are concerned, uh, I've already said elsewhere this morning that this is one of the unfortunate effects of war. Some people might even go as far as to say or to claim or argue um, that it's a legitimate aspect of war. Uh, when people fight wars, your troops on either side uh, try and kill each other or you try and starve out the other side. Uh, it's been known to happen before. in a very difficult situation. We would very much like to receive aid, particularly mindful of the amount of sympathy we have in Britain. Now, the only factor inhibiting this is the attitude of the Wilson government, which persists in supplying arms. I mean, do you see any logic in it? Today, you send us hundreds of tons of milk, butter, sugar. At the same time, probably the, the, the one plane is leaving Gatwick, another plane is leaving to, to Lagos with arms and ammunition. What's the purpose? Why prolong the agony? This is her attitude. <laughs> The astonishing thing is that hunger and privation have not demoralized these people. They refuse to be starved into surrender. They'd rather die, if die they must, fighting. The Biafran army now has far more recruits than it can possibly cope with. You are a hunter? Yes. <laughs> Very good. Turn about. Turn about. The other one. Turn about. Close your left eye. Give him number. Just for them. And most of them don't feel down to, to you are ordinary. You are Please. Not dying. Please. You may not die. Uh, please, I, I want to be Go away. We shall conquer. We are the brave, fighting for our nation. By the name of Jesus, we shall conquer. <laughs> This mission, St. Finbus, is surrounded by Bofa guns, ACAC guns. They have no radar. They have to wait until they see the aircraft before they can give themselves time to load and fire and give the people surrounding this time to prepare. 
Death, gloom, and wanton destruction of property. We are anxious and eager for peace, not peace of death or of surrender. That has been our aim and policy all along the struggle. We have devoted as much energy and attention in pursuit of peace as we have done in pursuit of our survival. The failure so far has been because the enemy does not believe in peace through negotiations but in peace through military victory, peace between the conqueror and the conquered, peace on his own terms. Thank you. 